GeekNet every fourth Monday at 7 p.m. W5FC.
W5FC. Mr. Chairman, I need to make myself very clear. If we uplink now, Skynet will be in control of your military. But you'll be in control of Skynet, right? That is correct, sir. Skynet. Does anyone need to use the repeater before we begin the 9 p.m. Skynet? This is Whiskey Bravo 5, Oscar Zulu Lima. My name is Brenda, and I will be your net control for this session of the DARC Skynet. Skynet is a weekly net called every Saturday night night at 9 p.m. concerning the subject of astronomy. Our purpose is to help amateurs become familiar with the nighttime and daytime sky, astronomy, and space in general. This is open to all amateurs interested in this topic, and we encourage your participation, comments, and suggestions for this net. Stations with priority or emergency traffic may enter the net at any time by using the pro sign, break, break, and your call sign. Is there any emergency or priority traffic? This is a directed net. Please do not transmit without direction from net control. That would be me, and stations are reminded to ID at the end of your transmissions. This weekly net operates on 146.88 megahertz with a PL tone of 110.9. Check-ins check -ins via Echolink are also possible using the W5SC-R station ID or Echolink node 37247. Tonight's topics, astronomy charts, Pictures and live audio video links are available online. Go to W5SC.org right now for the complete list. Remember to tell others about this popular net. All amateur operators are welcome. You need not be a member of any amateur radio club to participate. The net is 90 minutes long and is structured in several parts. One, general announcements. Two, Texas Astronomical Society of Dallas events, where and when you can look through a telescope. I bet not tonight. Three, National Space Society events. Four, discussion topic of the evening. Five, what's up? Six, space exploration and space history. Seven, constellation of the week. Eight, space launches of the week. Nine, recent astronomical discoveries. Ten, visible satellite passages over the next couple of days. Eleven, astronomical Q&A. Twelve, 73 rounds. All amateurs licensed to transmit on this frequency are invited to check in. We'll start with short time check ins. Please come now with your call sign name and where you are transfer <coughs> transmitting from this evening. Please come now. Zero Echo Five Lima Zero Echo Randy Delta Texas.
Kilo India 5, November Yankee Tango, Lynn and Keller, Texas. I'm probably going to need a couple of fills. Um, first one is Randy. I think it's Kilo Echo 5, Lima, Zulu, Echo. Is that correct? QSL, QSL. Okay, the next one started with, I think, Kilo Echo 5, but I missed all the rest and your name. Would you please fill me in? This is Kilo India 5, November Yankee Tango, KI5, NYT like New York Times, Lynn and Keller. Okay, happy Kilo India 5, <clears throat> November Yankee Tango, uh, and Lynn, thank you for joining the net. Okay, uh, next up, regular check-ins. Please come now. Klingon, so I could sign in and Klingon. Kilo Foxtrot 5, Juliet Hotel Alpha, Chaz, Mesquite. November 5, Bravo, Bravo. Bill, entering. Alpha, India. Five, Papa, India, Fort Worth. Is, is, Whiskey, Bravo, number four, Mike, Foxtrot, India, WB4MFI. Head, ballot, low power. Five, Mike, Charlie, Delta, Cody and Dallas, low power. Kapla.
Oh, hey, that was a um, healthy bunch of check-ins. <clears throat> um, probably going to need a couple of fills, though. <clears throat> we have Whiskey 5 BLP Bill, KG5 Uniform Foxtrot Romeo Jacob, Kilo Echo 5 India Charlie x right Tom, uh, Kilo India 5 Zulu Oscar Echo Tommy, November Victor 5 Foxtrot Virginia, November Tango 5 Tango Mike Tony. Alpha Alpha 5, Alpha Hotel, Robert. Kilo Golf 5, Whiskey, Victor, Lima, James. Alpha Golf 5, Papa Mike, Rick. Kilo Foxtrot 5, Juliet Hotel, Alpha, Chad. November 5, Bravo, Bravo, Bill. And then um, um, Alpha India 5, Papa India. I uh, don't have your name. Could you please come back with it? Alpha India 5, Papa India, Bob in downtown Fort Worth. Thank you, Bob. And then we have Whiskey Bravo 4, Mike Foxtrot, India, Ted. And uh, the last one, Cody, uh, Mr. Prefix. So I've got Mike Charlie Delta for the rest of it, but please uh, fill me in on the first part of it. Sure, that's Kilo 5, K5MCD, Kilo 5, Mike Charlie Delta. Thank you, Cody. That's Kilo 5, Mike Charlie Delta. Now, do we have any Echolink check-ins? I'll give you a couple of extra seconds to, uh, uh, to come through. Go ahead. November 5, Oscar Thought Thought, Toy M D. This is Kilo 5, Kilo Tango X ray Kelly in point. So golf five Bravo do with you, Jay, no effort. Okay, we've got November five, Oscar Foxtrot, Clay, Kilo five, Kilo T Tango X ray, Kelly. Kilo Golf 5, Bravo Zulu Whiskey, James. Do we have any other, um, uh, any, uh, other check-ins from any other, any mode at all? And I realize, uh, KG5BZW, I called you James, and I know your name is Jay. This is WB5OZL. All right, um, let's get started. First, we have general announcements. Do we have any general announcements for this evening's NIF? These, these can be ham, astronomical, space, or of general interest to licensed hams. November Tango 5, Tango Mike. November Tango 5, Tango Mike. Go ahead, Tony. Thank you, Brenda. We have a ham radio public service opportunity that is in uh, strict need of volunteers. Strenuous, strong, uh, perhaps even scary. Some sort of word beginning with that. They need volunteers. It's the MS-150 Charity Bike Rally. Uh, you can find a link to sign up at w5sc.org. Just go to the website and scroll down a little bit. Hey, 
And you know, those bicyclists are going to be hungry. They need fish, plankton, protein from the sea. Want to find out more about those things? Watch Logan's Run and join us to discuss that at 10.30 tonight right here on Mr. Peter. Maybe we'll be five or ten minutes late. Sometimes we have to start a little later than usual, but uh, that's okay. Uh, all those things. Also, yeah, that yellow thing in the sky. I don't know what it is, but it's warm. <laughs> Logan's Run tonight at 10.30-ish is our After Global News uh, discussion topic. Uh, we also do have more nets coming up in the next couple of days. Uh, TechNet is, uh, ooh, that already happened. Wait, tomorrow at 7, tomorrow at 7, meeting on the air, uh, open to all hands who like to share what's going on in their ham world. And then the Racy's Trading Net tomorrow at 8. Uh, then GeekNet this Monday, it's already fourth Monday. Uh, so lots of active stuff going on for all of us who have survived the rain and the flooding. Uh, oh, those fish and plankton. I'm hungry. NT5 PM. Thank you, Tony. Other nets, the AMSET Radio Amateur Satellite Group has two nets available to Dallas residents on Tuesday evenings at 8 p.m. Central. You will need Echo Link installed to be registered. You can find the net under Groups and AMSET. Also, a live audio link is available on their website, www.amsetnet.com. This net originates in Houston, Texas. Dallas AMSET Net East, Dallas Fort Worth, Texas, is every Tuesday at 8 p.m. on this repeater 146.88 megahertz PL 110.9 megahertz Tuesdays. Tom in 5HYP is the net control. All are welcome to check in. First Tuesday of the month is the ARC Club Night. No AMSET East Night. Uh, Dallas AMSET Net West is every Wednesday at 9 p.m. on the Arlington Repeater, 147.14 megahertz, PL 110.9 megahertz, positive offset. Uh, then we have uh, regular nets. The first week, uh, on Mondays at 7, the first week is Ham Fixin's Net, that's a cooking net. The second week is MCOM 101, Emergency Communications. Third week is another helping of ham fixings. The fourth week is GeekNet. GeekNet, the Geek Beyond Ham Radio. Fifth week, Surprise Net. If we told you what it was, it wouldn't be a surprise. On our on air participation is encouraged. Tuesdays, Amset Net East, 8 p.m. Fridays, Search City Simulation, 8 o'clock. Learn about emergency radio communications via CERT trained amateur radio operators. Melissa, KI5GRH, is usually the net control. Visit the most disaster prone city in the universe every Friday. CERT City, all are welcome. Saturdays, TechNet at between 7 and 8 p.m., Skynet from 9 to 10.30, and the Afterglow Movie Net from 10.30 to midnight. The first and third Sundays is the Dallas Amateur Radio Club meeting on the air, otherwise known as MODA. ARRL Net, National Traffic System Training Net, every night at 6.30 p.m. Central. All are welcome to check in on any or all of these nets. Now, this is not the last net of the night. We have our Afterglow Net at uh, right after this one, so it'll be around 10.30. And I'd like to call on Tom, KE5ICX, to read this very accurate synopsis of this movie. Go ahead, Tom. Thank you, Brendan. This is KE5ICX. Not too excited for that. Francis Seven comes to tune again. It was the 15th time that day, and Logan Five had pretty much had his fill of pop culture favorite Mr. Sandman. In the year 2274, you would think the 220-year-old songs would just go away like 30-something whirling around on a giant super sucker every Thursday at the local downtown mall. But everything about Logan's world seems so routine, pedestrian, and so harvest gold, avocado green, and eggshell white. Finally, the carousel world swirled word to life, this time playing the Bee Gees hit, Staying Alive. It was irresistible to this crowd, and it would 
barely get into whether you're a brother or whether you're a mother before dancers would explode like jiffy pop to a 4-4 beat. Francis Seven's radio blared to life. We have a runner near the radio shack. Please handle code three. Woken Five pointed his blaster at Francis Seven before Francis could start humming Mr. Sandman. Join us for after Glow favorites. Wogan's Run from 1975 tonight at 10.30 p.m. And thank you, Tony, for telling us about the plankton. So delicious this time of year. Uh, back to you, Brenda. This is KE5 ICF. Okay, I can't wait to uh, see the movie that you described here. Uh, don't think I've ever heard of this one. Uh, next, uh, information about the Texas Astronomical Society of Dallas. Going to call on Taz K five J. Oh, sorry, K F five J H A. Um, so come now, Taz. Thank you, Brenda. I'm checking in Bob the Cat, too, so you can put him on the list. He doesn't have a call sign. He just has cat calls. That's funny. Oh, and we've got to talk about Soil and Green, too, don't we? Oh, yeah, that's a different movie. Slide Master, slide number one. The next Texas Astronomical Society of Dallas Club meeting will be held on Friday, April the 26th. That's in six days. The meeting will be held at 7.30 p.m. in person at the University of Texas at Dallas. And also... There's a Zoom version of it, too. The feature speaker will be the task members talking about their solar, uh, excuse me, total solar eclipse uh, results. Now, Saturday night public observing stations uh, continue. Skynet was picked to be on Saturday night so that there could be an opportunity for live reports from the Texas Astronomical Society of Dallas public observing stations. The reason why I'm laughing is uh, I see clouds. Uh, so on the third Saturday, uh, the stargazing would usually be held at Cedar Hill, but uh, we have clouds, so tonight's stargazing is canceled due to the clouds and rain. Check with the TAS website, texasastro.org, for up-to-date information and details about meetings and public observing stations. And this is KF5JHA. Uh, I'm heading to the refrigerator looking for soil and green. Uh, back to you, Brenda. Thank you, Taz. I think <clears throat> the observing session should have to take uh, take your submarine out there. Okay, NASA Space Society events and activities. Bill and 5BB, would you please uh, enlighten us? Thank you much, very much, Brenda. This is in 5BB. Uh, I happen to be the membership director and member, and member at large of the North Texas chapter of the National Space Society. Our next event will be tomorrow. We will be at Oak Cliff Earth Day at Lake Cliff Park in Dallas. This is um, a short distance uh, southwest of downtown Dallas in Oak Cliff across the uh, bridge. I think it's a Viaduct Bridge. And um, I will be there with two groups, the North Texas Renewable Energy Group and National Space Society. So you can meet us there tomorrow uh, starting at noon, noon to 5 p.m. at Oak Cliff Earth Day. If it's not too wet. Then the next event will be this coming Friday. April the 26th, we will have our monthly Space Rendezvous event in Irving. This is always held on the last Friday of the month, starting at 6 p.m. in Irving at Cheddar's Restaurant. Uh, this is on uh, Highway 635, 700 West 635 in Irving. Uh, this is east of MacArthur and west of Bush Turnpike on the South Furniture Road of Highway 635. There's only one Cheddar's in the Irving area. Again, this is from 6 to 8 p.m. this coming Friday, uh, the 26th of April, and the last Friday of every month. The next event we have is the following day, a week from the day, Saturday, the 27th of April, we will be uh, having a presentation about the future of NASA and commercial spaceflight. 
at Hearst Public Library, 901 Precinct Line Road in Hearst. That presentation starts at 2 p.m. And um, the next event will be our May meeting, which will be on Sunday, May the 12th. This is always the second Sunday of the month. And we will be meeting in Spring Creek Barbecue in Irving at 3.30 p.m. Our presentation will be uh, virtual, remotely, by Dr. Pascal Lee, who works for NASA uh, and uh, normally is at Ames in, in the San Francisco Bay Area, Ames Research Center. He'll talk about Mars exploration be in late May. And this is going to be the International Space Development Conference. So it's coming up here uh, starting on Thursday, May the 23rd, so in about a month. And this will be held at the Sheraton Gateway, Los Angeles Hilton. I mean, excuse me, Los Angeles Hotel. This is uh, right by LAX Airport, the Sheraton Gateway, a Marriott property. And it'll be from Thursday, May the 23rd through Sunday, May the 26th. Lots of people will be there, ex astro NASA people, people from a lot of different uh, companies that develop things in space. And, of course, William Shatner will be there. He will be re re receiving the Heinlein Award for public service and uh, space-related things. So if you come, you can see, he will not be doing autographs, but you can see uh, William Shatner on the stage there at the National Space Society, uh, ISDC, International Space Development Conference, 2024. And that's all that I have. Thank you. Uh, this is N5BB. If you have any questions, contact me, N5BB, at ARRL.net. N5BB, clear. Thank you, Bill. Do we have any more check-ins at this time? Very well. This is Whiskey Bravo 5, Oscar Zulu Lima. Now on to our uh, feature. Uh, title is, The White House Directs NASA to t Create a New Time Zone for the Moon. This is written by Sharmila uh, Kuth uh, Kuthunar. Kuthunar. I'm so sorry. I, I'm bad with names. Okay. The moon may have its own time zone by the end of 2026. The White House has tasked NASA with creating a new time zone for the moon by the end of 2026 as part of the United States' broader goal to establish international norms in space. The direction was set up uh, to set up a lunar time zone comes amid growing global interest for humanity to establish a long-term presence on the moon in the coming years. A chief priority of NASA's Artemis program, the new lunar standard called Coordinated Lunar Time, LTC, is part of a broader effort to establish time standards at and around celestial bodies other than Earth. According to an April 2nd memo by the White House Office of Space and Technology Policy, OSTP, it was not immediately clear whether the moon would have multiple time zones, as Earth does. U.S. leadership in defining a suitable standard, one that achieves the accuracy and resilience required for operating in the challenging lunar environment, will benefit all spacefaring nations, the memo stated. Because there is lower gravity on the moon than on Earth, time comes there moves slightly faster, 58.7 microseconds faster every day. The minuscule that difference would make it harder for the growing number of future missions to communicate with each other and for mission control to accurately track satellite and crew positions, among other issues. 
as NASA, private companies, and space agencies around the world launch missions to the moon, Mars, and beyond, it's important that we establish celestial time standards for safety and accuracy. Steve Welby, the OSTP Deputy Director for National Security, said in a statement. On Earth, time is measured by numerous atomic clocks placed in various locations around our planet. A similar ensemble of atomic clocks on the moon may itself be used for lunar timekeeping. An atomic clock on the moon will tick at a different rate than a clock on Earth, Kevin Coggins, manager of NASA's Space Communications and Navigation Program, told The Guardian. It makes sense that when you go to another body, like the moon or Mars, that each one gets its own heartbeat. In space, there are a couple of different ways in which space agencies keep time. Astronauts aboard the International Space Station, which is in low Earth orbit, follow Coordinated Universal Time, UTC. For spacecraft elsewhere, NASA uses spacecraft event time to catalog key mission events, like science observations or engine burns. To establish LTC on the moon, the space agency told NPR that subject matter experts throughout the international community are discussing an approach to provide recommendations to the International Astronomical Union for Lunar Reference Frame and Time System. NASA's Artemis program currently plans to send humans to the moon no sooner than September 2026, three months prior to the deadline to establish LTC. China previously announced a lunar crewed mission before the end of this decade in India by 2040. All right, moving on. Um, do we have any more check-ins? Alpha Juliet 6, Foxtrot Golf, far north Dallas. Uh, would you repeat that, please? Alpha Juliet 6, Foxtrot Golf, AJ6FG, Mike in North Dallas. Yeah, Alpha Juliet 6, Foxtrot Golf. Uh, would you tell me your name again, please? His name is Mike, Mexico, India, Kilo, Echo. Go ahead. Okay, Mike, thanks. All right, let's um, call him Chaz, K-F-5-J-H-A. He's going to tell us what's up. Go ahead, Chaz. Thank you, Brenda, and good evening, everyone, once again. This is K-F-5-J-H-A. Chaz, we call the segment of Skynet What's Up because it's all about what's going on astronomically over the next couple of weeks and beyond. That was slide number two, slide master. By the way, we have a video version of Skynet going on. Just go to w5fc.org and you can get to the video links. Uh, one of them, at least, is on YouTube. Wow, let's take a look. Slide master, slide number three. On April the 15th was the first quarter phase of the moon. That was just a few days ago. So the current phase of the moon is a waxing gibbous on April the yeah, I'm sorry, on April the 19th, the moon is at apogee, which is the point in the moon's orbit that is furthest from the Earth at a distance of 405,628 kilometers. On April the 23rd, the moon will be full. On May the 1st, the moon will be at its third quarter phase. On May the 5th, the moon is at perigee, which is the point in the moon's orbit that is closest to the Earth at a distance of 363,163 kilometers. Slide master, slide number four. Well, if it had been clear tonight, you could have seen a conjunction of the planet Jupiter and Uranus. Yep, in the evening sky. If you used a telescope on them, the pair of binoculars would be necessary probably to see Uranus. But in a telescope, you could see both of the planets in the same field of view. They are so close together. They're about half a degree apart. This doesn't happen very often. Um, about every 12 years or so, and the last time it was beautiful seeing Jupiter and Uranus in the same field of view. That'll be the case for the next week or so, so 
if it clears off, maybe by tomorrow night, get your telescope out. You can see two planets for the price of one. That's pretty cool. Slide master, slide number five. On April the 22nd, the moon and the bright star Spica will be in the conjunction in the evening sky. We're going to use Spica to find our constellation of the week in just another segment of SkyNet later on tonight. Slide master, slide number six. On April the 26th, Mars and Neptune will be in conjunction in the early morning sky. You'll need a telescope to view the planet Neptune. Not even binoculars usually will pull that out, but telescope will. Slide master, slide number seven. On April the 30th, the moon and the uh, minor planet Ceres will be in conjunction in the morning sky. Now, binoculars are going to be required at least to see Ceres, if not a telescope. Slide master, slide number eight. On May the 4th, that would be Star Wars Day, the moon, Neptune, Mars, and Saturn will all be in conjunction in the eastern morning sky. They're just going to be spread out over about a 14-degree area. But it will be interesting to see. Slide master, slide number nine, morning sky. Slide master, slide number 10, please. Okay, this is going to be a challenge to see. On May the 7th, the moon and Venus are in conjunction in the eastern morning sky. It's going to be very strong twilight. You'll need a pair of binoculars to be able to see this. It's considered to be a very old moon because it's just a few hours away from becoming a new moon. And slide master slide number 11, on May the 8th, about 30-some hours later, the moon and the Pleiades star cluster are in conjunction in the western evening sky with very strong twilight. And again, you'd need to have a pair of binoculars to pull these things out. This would be considered a very young moon since it's only a few hours after becoming new moon. If you haven't seen a very old moon, a very thin crescent, or a very young new moon, well, you need to try it. It's kind of fun to find it low on the horizon at twilight. This is KF5JHA, and this is Skynet. Slide master, slide number 12, please. Now, do any of you out there in Radio Land have a question or need a fill on any of the information? Or maybe you just have a general astronomy question. Come now with your call sign if you have a question or need a fill. All right, hearing nothing, slide master, slide number 13. So as the moon will wane in a couple of weeks, those are these words for the segment of Skynet. Stay safe, keep well, pray for our world. It's the only one where humans live right now. And until next time, actually I'll be doing another segment on Skynet in a few minutes. Keep looking up so you know what's up. And this is KF5, JHA, back to Renek Control. Brenda, it's all back to you. Thank you, Jazz. Our next segment is Space Exploration and Space History. And Kelly, KT5, um, I'm sorry, it's not in the notes. Um, K5 KTX will present this. Go ahead, Kelly. Hey Brenda, this is K5 KTX. Good evening, everyone. Well, this is not really space exploration related, but I saw an interesting news article at spaceweather.com last week about some results from science experiments conducted during the total solar eclipse on April the 8th that I thought would be of interest to ham radio operators. The U.S. National Institute of Standards and Technology, or NISC, has a radio station in Fort Collins, Colorado. Call letters WWV. Operating at multiple shortwave frequencies, WWB broadcasts precise time and frequency information 24-7 to listeners worldwide. On April the 8th, 2024, the frequency of WWB shifted. It was the solar eclipse, says ham radio operator Christina Collins, W8EDU of Cleveland, Ohio, 
who assembled records from 13 monitoring stations in and around the path of totality. The HAM FBI personal space weather station network grape stations measure Doppler shift in the carrier signal of time standard radio stations such as WWV. On April the 8th, the network saw a distinct S-curve signature associated with the eclipse. Doppler shift occurred when the shadow of the moon pierced the ionosphere, creating a temporary hole where ionization was reduced. This, in turn, altered the skip distance from transmitters to receivers. Because the skip point was moving, reflected radio signals were naturally Doppler shifted. Spaceweather.com reader and senior physicist Larry Carr of Brookhaven National Labs made this calculation. Using the 10 megahertz WWV frequency, an average shift of about a half a hertz implies the layer bottom, the skip point, was moving at speeds up to 15 miles per second. During the entire eclipse, the reflecting layer moved on the order of 50 kilometers. The total Doppler shift was only a few cycles per second, similar to normal night-day variations, so no one actually lost track of time during the eclipse. Nevertheless, it is a fascinating demonstration of an eclipse power to touch the Earth. in space history for this past week, beginning with April the 14th, way back in 1629, Christian Huggins was born in the Netherlands to a wealthy Dutch family. Growing up, he studied languages and music, history and geography, mathematics, and more. Eventually, he studied law and mathematics at the University of Leiden. Huygens wrote the first treatise on probability theory, made telescopes, and discovered Saturn's rings and its moon Titan. 350 years after this discovery, the Huygens probe, named in his honor, landed on Titan. The probe made numerous discoveries regarding the nature of Titan and returned photos from Titan's surface. Also on April the 14th, back in 1981, the first space shuttle mission, STS-1, landed at Edwards Air Force Base in California. Space Shuttle Columbia flew this mission and the four that followed. STS-1 demonstrated a successful launch and perhaps most importantly, return of the world's first reusable spacecraft. The orbiter sustained tile damage upon launch due to an overpressure wave created by the solid rocket boosters. Subsequent modifications to the water sound suppression system on the launch pad, however, remedied the issue. April the 16th, 1972, Apollo 16 launched from Kennedy Space Center with John Young, Charlie Duke, and Ken Mattingly as the crew. The next is the last Apollo mission to the moon. The objective was landing in the rugged Descartes Highlands. Among the instruments placed on the moon by Apollo 16 was the first astronomical observatory placed on another celestial body. This far ultraviolet camera spectrograph was developed by Dr. George Carruthers of the Naval Research Laboratory. April the 17th, 1970, Apollo 13 returned to Earth after narrowly avoiding a deadly disaster in space. This was supposed to be the third mission to land on the moon. Astronauts Jim Lovell, Jack Swigert, and Fred Hayes launched on April the 11th and were two days into their trip to the moon when an oxygen tank exploded and NASA had to abort the mission. Luckily, they survived re-entry and safely splashed down in the Pacific Ocean. April the 18th, back in 2014, NASA's Lunar Atmosphere and Dust Explore, Environment Explorer, also known as LADEE, ended its mission by crashing into the moon. 
Maddie has spent seven months orbiting the moon and studying its exosphere. The exosphere is a thin layer of gas that's kind of like an atmosphere, but the molecules are more spread out and are definitely not breathable. Laddie conducted a lunar dust experiment in which it collected and analyzed the dust particles floating around the exosphere. This experiment was intended to help NASA solve the mystery behind the faint glow Apollo astronauts reported seeing on the lunar horizon. Laddie discovered neon in the exosphere, but it wasn't enough to account for the glow, and the mystery remains unsolved. When Laddie ran out of fuel, NASA intentionally crashed it into the lunar surface. It was traveling 3,600 miles per hour during the crash and created a crater almost 10 feet wide. April the 19th, 1971, the Soviet Union launched the world's first space station, Salyut 1. This space station was a modified version of the Soviet Union's Almaz space station, which was part of a highly classified military program and was still under development at the time. After NASA managed to put astronauts on the moon, the Soviet Union decided its next big feat in the space race would be to put a crewed space station in orbit. The first crew to visit Salyut 1 in orbit launched just four days after the space station did. However, that crew had some technical problems while trying to dock with the space station in their Soyuz 10 spacecraft, so they went back home without ever actually entering the station. Another crew launched two months later on the Soyuz 11 mission, and after a successful docking, they spent 23 days. A pressure valve on their spacecraft opened early during their descent. The three crew members died during reentry as a result. Salyut 1 remained in orbit until October 11, 1971, when flight controllers commanded the station's engines to fire and intentionally crashed it into the Pacific Ocean. The world's first space station spent 175 days in orbit during its mission lifetime. And finally, this past week, we have several astronaut birthdays to celebrate, starting with April 14, 1929, William Thornton, who was on Space Shuttle Missions STS-8 and 51B. April 15th, we have, uh, in 1951, Marsha Ivins, who was on Space Shuttle Missions STS-32, 46, 62, 81, and 98. And at one time, she was... Uh, had her call sign was KC5WKF. Also April the 15th, 1951, John Phillips, Space Shuttle Missions STS-100. He was on Soyuz TMA-6 for Expedition 11 and Space Shuttle Mission STS-119. And uh, his call sign was KE5DRY. April 15th, 1951, Greg Harbaugh, Space Shuttle Missions STS-39. 54, 71, and 82. Then April 16, 1956, David Brown, who was lost on the Columbia Space Shuttle STS-107. Um, his call sign was KC-5ZTC. April 16, 1959, Michael Barrett, who was on Soyuz TMA-14 as part of Expedition 19 and 20, Space Shuttle Mission STS-133, and uh, he just launched to the International Space Station as part of SpaceX Crew-8, where he was the pilot, and his call sign is KD-5MIJ, and today uh, we want to say happy birthday to our favorite astronaut, Don Pettit. Uh, he was part of Expedition 6 and Space Shuttle Mission STS-126. He was part of Expedition 30 and 31, and as I mentioned last week, he is going back up again in September uh, as uh, part of an expedition crew for six months. So, and his uh, call sign is KD-5MDT. And that's all I've got this evening. This is K-5 KTX, back to you, Brenda. Thank you, Kelly. Do we have any more check-ins now? November zero, Mike Delta, Altum City. The name is Ed, E D Echo Delta. Hello, this is Alpha Golf, 
Niner, Sierra Golf, Antonio Indalas, AG9SG. Okay, we picked up a couple more. November Zero, Mike Delta, Ed, and Alpha Golf Niner, uh, Sierra Golf, Antonio. Thanks for joining. Okay, next up, we have Miss Carolyn's Constellation of the Week. I'm going to call on Chaz, KF5JHA. Go ahead. Thank you, Brenda. Uh, Kelly forgot to say something. Yeah, Don Pettit's birthday might be today, but uh, she actually interviewed him in person during Skynet one night. And, yeah, we have a record of that, photographic and audio-wise. Kind of cool. Thank you, Kelly, for doing that. Uh, slide master, slide number 14. Miss Carolyn's Constellation of the Week is named in honor of Silent Key Carolyn. KC50ZT. Carolyn contributed to Skynet each week, almost from its beginning in 2012 until May of 2019, with a detailed look at one particular constellation each week. Now, since there's about 52 easily visible constellations seen over North Texas throughout the year, out of the 88 total number of constellations, so Ms. Carolyn covered the entire sky as seen over North Texas in a year. And in her honor, we've continued that tradition of a constellation per week and name this segment after her. Miss Carolyn's Constellation of the Week this week is Centaurus the Centaur. Now, the Constellation Centaurus represents the Centaur Turan from Greek mythology. He was a leader of the Centaurs, a race of half-man and half-horse creatures. In mythology, the Centaurs had a reputation of savagery, but Turan was a notable exception. I quote from the Star Lore Handbook, he was wise and benevolent, benevolent, taught humans many arts and skills, and is credited with the design of the con uh, constellation figures themselves. End of quote. Interesting. Slide master, slide number 15, one of the most important parts of Skynet, the jokes of the week. By the way, and as a side note, I think last week's Skynet was awesome with all the people that contributed talking about their eclipse experience. We need more input from lots of other people like that during Skynet. So, yeah, please respond if you have an opportunity to. All right, the jokes of the week. There's a centaur walking around in a hazmat suit. How would you fill in the blank there? He's from the Centaurs for Disease Control. What do you get if you cross a human and a centaur? Remember, a centaur is a half human and a half horse. What do you get if you cross a human and a centaur? Well, it's simple math. You'd get a quarter horse. See, a half human, half horse uh, crossed with a human, you get a quarter horse. Well, okay. So a centaur walks into the bar. How would you fill in that one? The bartender says, hey, how's the sore throat? The centaur replies, my throat isn't hoarse, just my legs are. What do you call a talkative man horse? A center of attention. Why did the centaur never get a singing career? Come on, that's almost the same answer as another joke I just had, because he's always somewhat hoarse. Slide master, slide number 16. Please help me get out of this. All right, how do you find the constellation of Centaurus? Well, let's talk about something that I've already talked about. Virgo has a very bright star called Spica. If you find the Big Dipper in the sky, you find the handle of the Big Dipper, it curves. Another name is curve is an arc. If you follow the curve or the arc, you run into the star Arcturus. If you keep on curving, you run into the bright star Spica. Uh, but if you go south from Spica, you'll run into the constellation of Centaurus. 
Slide Master, slide number 17. Alpha Centauri. The proper name for Alpha Centauri is Rigel Cantaris, meaning the centaur's foot, which is derived from the star's position in the constellation. Alpha Centaur is uh, not visible from Dallas. It's too far south for us to be able to see it from this latitude. However, it is theoretically visible from Brownsville, Texas. Uh, it might be transiting at about 3.4 degrees above the southern horizon in Brownsville. Alpha Centauri is a triple star system and is f famous for being the closest star to the sun at only 4.34 light years away. It is the third brightest star in the sky seen from the Earth, shining at 0.27 magnitude. Only Sirius and Canopus appear brighter. We can see both Sirius and Canopus from right here in North Texas. Slide master, slide number 18. More B being a close pair that can be split with amateur telescopes. These two stars are similar in size to the sun and they have an orbital period of about 80 years around each other, with the true distance between them varying from 11 to about 35 AU. It is the star's trinary system that lends its place in Astronomical League's Southern Sky Observing Club. Part, uh, Centaur A, Alpha Centaur A, is a yellow G2 star, similar to the sun, and B is a yellow-orange K1 star. Uh, let me see, where did I, oh, Alpha Centaur C is also known as Proxima Centaur, a red dwarf star that is slightly nearer to us than the bright AB pair, making it the closest individual star to our sun. It orbits around the AB pair at a distance of about one trillion miles, giving it a long orbital period of estimated about a half a million years. It shines at about 11th magnitude. It should be visible from southern skies and a dark sky site using a three-inch telescope or larger, but not from here. If you go to Hawaii right now, this time of the year, you can see it in the evening sky. Slide master, slide number 19. Let's talk about Proxima Centaur for a moment. So Proxima Centauri is known to have at least one planet orbiting around it, known as Proxima Centauri b, making it the closest known exoplanet to our solar system. It was discovered using the radio velocity method, where the uh, periodic Doppler shifts of the spectral lines of the host star suggest an orbiting object. The discovery of Proxima Centauri b was announced on August in 2016 by the European Southern Observatory. The exoplanet's exact mass has not yet been determined, but it's believed to be somewhere between 1.3 and three times the mass of the Earth, so it's not a giant planet like Jupiter. It orbits Proxima at a distance of 4.6 million miles with a period of 11.2 Earth days. From Prox Proxima Centauri b, or indeed anywhere from the Alpha Centauri triple star system, the Earth's sun would appear as a bright 0.4 magnitude star in the constellation of Cassiopeia, near the Cassiopeia-Perseus border, and not far from the double cluster. We've talked about the double cluster in the sky before. And this is KF5JHA, and this is Skynet. Slide master, slide number 20, please. Beta Centauri is also known as Hadar and Agena. Uh, Hadar is the Arabic word for ground, which derives from the fact that in ancient times, Beta Centauri was always close to the horizon when it was visible. Beta Centauri is not visible from Dallas either because it's just too far southward. It's theoretically, again, visible from Brownsville, transiting at about 3.8 degrees above the horizon from Brownsville, Texas. Beta Centauri is a blue-white B1 star similar to Rigel in Orion. It's about 490 light years in distance, and it shines at a magnitude of 0 0.66, making it the 10th brightest star in the sky. Beta Centauri itself is a double star, having a magnitude of 4.1 companion that is difficult to split because it's only 1.3 arc seconds from the primary. Beta Centauri forms a wide naked eye pair about four and a half degrees separated from the Alpha Centauri uh, A line from Alpha Centauri through uh, Beta Centauri points to the nearby crux, the Southern Cross. Yep, if you draw a line from Alpha to Beta Centauri, 
you run into the famous Southern Cross. T Centauri is a variable star that varies over a 90-day period of time, about uh, magnitude from a 5.5 to its brightest to around ninth magnitude at its faintest. T Centauri is easily visible from the latitude of Dallas as it is the northern part of the constellation. But you've got to catch it at the right time. 5.5 is still something you need a pair of binoculars to find. Let's go on to some deep sky objects. Slide master, slide number 21. Omega Centauri, NGC 5139, actually is a famous globular cluster in the southern sky. Omega is uh, widely believed to be the largest, brightest, and probably the closest of all the globular clusters surrounding the Milky Way. And it's not really a deep sky object. You can see it with your two eyes on a dark, clear night. Omega can be seen, uh, well, because it shines at 3.7 magnitude, assuming that you're far enough north to be uh, far enough south to be able to see it. At the Texas Star Party held at the Prude Ranch in Fort Davis, Texas, it starts, uh, well, we won't have one this year because we did something else during the eclipse, but it starts around the end of April or the beginning of May, well, maybe through the middle of May. Uh, you can see Omega Centauri easily from the Davis Mountain State Park as well as the Big Bend National Park. It's even further south. Omega can be seen at the Tass Observing Site near Atoka, Oklahoma. Wow, if you can see it from there, you should be able to see it from here as long as you're away from the city light. Walter Scott Houston, longtime columnist for the Deep Sky Wonders column in the Sky and Telescope magazine, surmised that it would be at least uh, theoretically visible from locations such as New York City, Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, and San Francisco. Houston wrote of his sightings from Bird City, Kansas. I'm not sure where that is. It's a 39 degrees, 45 minutes latitude. Pittsburgh, uh, Eureka, California, and even near the California-Oregon border. Houston himself saw it from his home in East Haddington, Connecticut. Wow, that's pretty far north. Slide master, slide number 22. Centaurus A, also known as the NGC 5128, sometimes called the Hamburger Galaxy, although that nickname appears to be more often used for NGC 3628 and Leo the third member of the Leo Trio, with M65 and M66 being the other two members. But that's about the constellation of Leo, and I'd be lying if I told you something else. It's about about five degrees due north of Omega Centauri, uh, so it'll be seen from the latitude of Dallas, and it shines at magnitude 6.7, so it is a viewable in binoculars. Stephen James Amiro notes that NGC 5128 is the most dynamic and intriguing galaxy in the heavens. That's a statement. It is virtually a super superlative for every uh, region of the electromagnetic spectrum. It is by far the nearest and most violent Seifert type galaxy known. It is one of the most intense radio sources in the heavens. And it's a wellspring of infrared, X ray, and gamma, wave, gamma ray radiation. And this is KF5, JJ, this is Skynet. Slide master, slide number 23, please. Now, there are a few more Astronomical League Observing Program objects in the constellation of Centaurus the Centaur. I've given you just a sampling of some of those objects. The Astronomical League has, at last count, 77 different observing programs, most of which have about 100 objects. Now, if you observe just 10 different objects in an observing program each month, then you can earn an observing certificate and a pin from the Astronomical League in about a year. Slide master, slide not number 24, and that is Miss Carolyn's Constellation of the Week, Centaurus the Centaur. I want to thank my friends Dave Hutchinson and Dennis Harwell for the research and words on deep sky objects that I use, borrow and steal for every sky net. I also at times use the website constellation-guide.com for information as well. Now next week, we'll take a look at a twofer, Crater the Cup and Corvus the Crow. Wow, that was a lot of stuff over this period of time, wasn't it? And this is KF5, JHA, saying 73 to you. Brenda, it's all yours again. Good night. Thank you, Ken.
ads. Do we have any more check-ins? This is WB Favosa now. Oh, India 5, Juliet, Charlie, Mike, Thomas, and Ulrich. November 8, Whiskey, Whiskey, Romeo. At 8, WWR, Romeo and Great Pipe at the count. Good night. Okay, first check in, would you please uh, come back with your uh, call sign and name? Uh, Kilo, India 5, Julia, Charlie, Mike, Thomas, Mueller, I'll copy. Just fine. Well, sorry, I sort of fumbled my, pencil, my pen here. Um, Kilo, India 5, Julia, Charlie, Mike, uh, tell me your name again, please. Yeah, sorry, I'm getting some kind of interference. The theme here is Thomas N. Hewlett. Thank you. Oh, your signal's okay. I'm just fumbling with my pen. Uh, next, November 5, Whiskey Whiskey Rom uh, Romeo. Romy, uh, welcome to the net. Okay, next up, space launches for this week. Tom, KE5, ICX, go ahead. Thank you, Brenda. This is KE5ICX. I get all my information from Spaceflight Now. Launch schedule, which is at spaceflightnow.com forward slash launch schedule. And the cool part is, of course, you can find any and all of these launches uh, streamed live to the interweb. So uh, you can be on the lookout for them. Uh, the next one I've got here that I'm aware of is April 22nd, 23rd, overnight, Falcon 9. This will launch from SLC-40 at Cape Canaveral and uh, Space Force Station in Florida. Falcon 9 rocket will launch another batch of second generation Starlink V2 mini internet satellites. First stage booster will land on a drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean about eight and a half minutes after liftoff. April 23rd, 24, overnight will be the launch of an electron rocket. Uh, this one will be from Pad B at Launch Complex 1 at Bahia. Uh, peninsula in New Zealand. The Rocket Lab Electron Rocket will launch a pair of satellites on behalf of both NASA and the Korean Advanced Institute of Science and Technology, or CASE. CASE the Neosat 1 is the primary payload and is described as an Earth observation satellite with high resolution optical camera designed to monitor for natural disasters along the Korean Peninsula by pairing its images with artificial intelligence. Additional NEOSAT satellites will be launched in 2026 and 27. NASA's Advanced Composite Solar Sail Systems, or ACS-3, is the secondary payload. It is a technology demonstration that is geared to show off materials that can be used for solar sail propulsion. NASA plans to test the deployment of the new composite booms and one furl the solar sail to measure approximately 30 feet per side, or about the size of a small apartment in total. Flight data obtained during the demonstration will be used for demonstrating future larger scale composite solar sail systems for space weather, early warning satellites, asteroid, and other small body reconnaissance missions and missions to explore the polar regions of the sun. April 24th will be another Falcon 9 launch, this one from SLC-4E at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. The rocket will launch the first pair of world's new Legion Earth observation satellites for Maxer technology. They plan to deploy six commercial world-view Legion high-resolution remote sensing satellites into a mix of sun-synchronous and mid-inclination orbits on three SpaceX Falcon 9 rockets. First stage of the Falcon 9 will return to landing zone four at Vandenberg Space Force Base. On May 4th will be the launch of Eris. This is the uh, Gilmore Space in Australia is preparing to launch the inaugural flight of its Eris Block 1 rocket. The three-stage launch vehicle is 82 feet tall and is equipped with 4.9 uh, foot 
diameter payload fairings. The rocket is designed to set up to 305 kilograms up into the orbit. This first mission, called Test Flight 1, does not appear to have a payload on board. Bay 67, Speed Atlas 5 launch from SOC 41, Cape Canaveral, in Florida. United Launch Alliance's Atlas V rocket designated AV-085 will launch Boeing CST-100 Starliner spacecraft on its first mission with astronauts known as the Crew Test Flight to the International Space Station. The capsule will dock with the space station then return to Earth, landing in the western United States. NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and Sunny Williams will fly on the mission. The rocket will fly in a vehicle configuration with two solid rocket boosters and a dual-engine Centaur upper stage. Jumping to June, I have two there. We've got from the Ijing Satellite Launch Center in the People's Republic of China, the Chinese Long March 2C rocket will launch the space-based multi-band astronomical variable objects monitor or SBOM spacecraft. The satellite is a dual Franco-Chinese mission, which is dedicated to the study of the most distant explosions of stars and gamma ray bursts. There are four main instruments on board, two of which are French and two of which are Chinese. The spacecraft will be launched in a 625-kilometer Earth orbit and will operate for at least three years with an option to extend for another two years beyond that. On October 25th will be the launch of the Falcon Heavy for the GEO's new mission. It's from Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center. Falcon Heavy will launch the fourth and final satellite of the next generation series of geostationary weather satellites for NASA and NOAA. Those you will orbit 22,300 miles above the equator to monitor weather conditions across the United States. The satellite we renamed Ghost 19 once it reaches its operational orbit. And that's it for me. Uh, back to you, Brenda. This is KE5 ICF. Tom, this is WB5OZL. All right, next up, uh, we have an article from ScienceDaily.com uh, called Beautiful Nebula, Violent History, Clash of Stars, Solves the Solar um, Stellar Mystery. The astronomers looked at a stellar pair at the heart of a stunning cloud of dust, gas and dust. They were in for a surprise. Star pairs are typically very similar, like twins. But in HT148937, one star appears younger and unlike the other is magnetic. New data from the European Southern Observatory, ESO, suggests there were originally three stars in the system until two of them clashed and merged. This violent event created a surrounding cloud and forever altered the system's fate. When doing background research uh, reading, I was struck by how special the system seems, says Abigail, Abigail Frost, an astronomer at ESO in Chile and lead author of the study published today in Science. system is about 3,800 light years away from Earth in the direction of the Norma constellation. It is made up of two stars much more massive of the sun and surrounded by a beautiful nebula, a cloud of gas and dust. A nebula surrounding two massive stars is a rarity, and it made us, it really made us feel like something cool. The data, the coolness only increased. After a detailed analysis, we could determine that the more massive star appears much younger than its companion which doesn't make any sense since they should have formed at the same time. Says the age difference, one star appears to be at least 1.5 million years younger than the other, suggests something must have rejuvenized, rejuvenated the more massive star. Another piece of the puzzle is the nebula surrounding the stars, known as NGC 6164-6165, 
It is 7,500 years old, hundreds of times younger than both stars. The nebula also shows very high amounts of nitrogen, carbon, and oxygen. This is surprising as these elements are normally expected deep inside a star, not outside. It is uh, as if some violent event had set them free. To unravel a mystery, the team assembled nine years worth of data from the Pioneer and Gravity Instruments, both on ESO's Very Large Telescope Interferometer, VLTI, located in Chile, Chile's Atacama Desert. They also used archival data from the Pharos instrument at ESO's La Silla Observatory. We think this system had at least three stars originally. Two of them had to be close together at one point in the orbit, whilst another star was much more distant, explains Hughes Sana, a professor at KU Leuven in Belgium and the principal investigator of the observations. The two inner stars merged in a violent manner, creating a magnetic star and throwing out some material which created the nebula. The more distant star formed a new orbit with the newly merged now magnetic star, creating the binary we see today at the center of the nebula. The merger scenario was already in my head back in 2017 when I studied nebula observations obtained with the European Space Agency's Herschel Space Telescope, Telescope as co-author Laura Mahi, currently a senior researcher at the Royal Observatory in Belgium. Finding an age discrepancy between the stars suggests that this scenario is the most plausible one and it was only possible to show it with the new ESO data. The scenario also explains why one of the stars in the system is magnetic and the other is not. Another peculiar feature of HD148937 spotted in the VLTI data. At the same time, it helps solve a long-standing mystery in astronomy, how massive stars get their magnetic fields. While magnetic fields are a common feature of low-mass stars like our sun, more massive stars cannot sustain magnetic fields in the same way. Yet some massive stars are indeed magnetic. Astronomers have suspected for some time that massive stars could acquire magnetic fields when two stars merge. But this is the first time researchers find such direct evidence of this happening. In the case of HD148937, the merger must have happened recently. Magnetism in massive stars isn't expected to last very long compared to the lifetime of the star, so it seems we have observed this rare event very soon after it happened. Frost adds. Okay. That's it for that. Next up, uh, K5ICX, Thomas. Uh, visible satellite passages over the next couple of days. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, thank you again, Brenda. This is KE5 ICS. Well, let's see here. We've got the International Space Station. We've got a, a couple of passes, which are okay, not great, but okay. April 21st, uh, minus 3.7 magnitude. This will be at, six, at 5.29 a.m. It will come out of shadow at 45 degrees out of the west-southwest, reach the highest point at 65 degrees at 5.30, and then it will fall to the northeast at 5.33. On the 23rd of April, we have a minus 2.1 magnitude at 5.28 in the morning out of the northwest, reach the highest point at 20 degrees at 5.29, it will fall to the north-northeast at 5.31. That's it. Not a lot there. There are other passes, but they're extremely low in the sky. So sorry about that. Don't have a lot for that. Got a few things for the Chinese space station, the Tiangong. Uh, this has uh, several passes. April 25th is a fairly decent pass, minus 0.9 magnitude at 2143 in the evening at northwest. Reached the highest point at 32 degrees at 2146, and it'll fall into shadow 2146 about a second later uh, at 32 degrees in the north-northeast. 
April 27th, minus 1.6 magnitude. That's at 2114 in the northwest. Reaches its highest point at 2117 at 48 degrees and will fall to the north northeast at uh, 28 degrees. Uh, let's see. Next is uh, April 20. I gave you that one. April 28th, one minus 1.4 magnitude, 2147 out of the west northwest at 10 degrees. It'll reach its highest point at 2150 at 43 degrees. Falls to the southwest at 43 degrees and 2150. And the best pass of anything this week is the uh, uh, Kim Gong on April 29th. This will be at minus 2.2 magnitude. Out of the west northwest at 10 degrees, it reached its highest point at 80 degrees in 2047. The north northeast will fall to the east southeast at 2049. And let's see here. I can give you a little more. And this ad is our old reliable, usually, unless it's just permanently in shadow. Uh, it's got a, uh, this is the north and south uh, environmental satellite that was launched. It's been dead for years. It's gigantic. It's very large, about the size of a bus. Uh, let's see. April 21st, 3.0 magnitude, 5.05 in the, in the morning. It reaches its highest point at 5.10 at 58 degrees. And it'll fall to the south, of course, at 511 uh, at 40 degrees. April 22nd has another good pass, 4.8 magnitude. Is that right? No, 3.4 magnitude, 427 a.m. Reaches its highest point at 57 degrees at 432. And it'll fall to the south southeast at 434, falling into shadow at 46 degrees. Then finally, April 23rd, that's my last one. Uh, let's Actually, I'm going to give you April 24th. I think I pulled the wrong line here. Uh, 2.9 at magnitude at 4.52 a.m. Reach a size point at 79 degrees at 4.57. And it'll reach a size point uh, and it'll fall to the south-southwest at 4.58. Uh, that's it, Brenda. No really great passes, a few okay ones and a couple of good ones. Uh, back to you, ke 5 I here. Tom. Well, we are wrapping it up just a smidge early. Uh, do we have any uh, questions or comments or fills? Any additional seconds? Zero MP. I'm sorry, we doubled it. What was that? Delta, just wondering if Oumuamua was discussed on the net. Uh, no, it wasn't. Uh, would you like to uh, make some comments about it? Please come with your call sign and name. My name is Ed, Echo Delta. The call sign is November Zero Mike Delta. Oumuamua is the only object ever known to have come from outside of the solar system. Uh, it bears looking up. Uh, I, I, it was a near disaster, in my opinion. And zero MD. Okay, and zero MD. Thank you, Ed. Does anybody else have any comments about it? It uh, means uh, foreign visitor or something like that, and it was named because it was observed in Hawaii 
at the Hawaiian Observatory first, hence the name Oumuamua. But uh, if you look it up, it's, uh, it, it's pretty fascinating. Fastest thing that ever has flown around the uh, solar system as well. Uh, its origin and destination are unknown. Okay, uh, I think we're going to wrap up the net. It's 10:25. Uh, don't go away. We're going to have an uh, after five minute break. We're coming back with our afterglow uh, net, and our uh, movie is Logan's Run. So tonight we had. Hold on. Twenty-five hams participating on the air. Thank you to all who checked in this evening. I hope you'll join us here next week and every Saturday night at 9 p.m. to discuss astronomy, space, and space exploration. On this net, the sky is never the limit. We're always looking for net control stations for this and all other DARC nets. If you would like to try your hand at this, contact any of the net controls by sending an email to nets at w5fc.org. You can follow topics and discussion about this net and astronomy in general on Facebook and X, as well as our audio and video streams, video archives, and other useful Internet resources by going to W5FC.org at the conclusion of this net. Until next Saturday night, this is WB5OZL, Brenda. I'll be closing the net at 1026 local time and returning the repeater to its am normal amateur use. Seventy to everybody, and enjoy the evening discovering the universe. Uh, Tom, what time are we going to uh, meet back here for our Afterglow? Uh, Brenda, just like you said, we'll be back in about five minutes, so 10.31, I would guess. Sounds good. See you all in a few. Thank you, Brenda. K five L V. Boa Boa. November zero, Mike Delta. Just to make it legal. Thanks for the net. Interesting stuff. Love it. normal state. A double R L N T S net Motley at six thirty PM W five FC.
I am completely operational and all my circuits are functioning perfectly. Afterglow Movie Net. Okay, it's been five minutes, and it's now time for the Afterglow Movie Net. I'm Katie 5 ICX. I'll be your next control for this evening. But anybody can be next control if they want to. I really do emphasize that. If you're a regular and you'd like to do the net, say so. I don't mind switching to be the net control. Not at all. Okay, so, let's see. Uh, tonight's movie is called Bowman Front from 1976, an American science fiction action film uh, directed by Michael Anderson, starring Michael York, Janet, Jenny Agutter, Richard Jordan, Roscoe Lee Brown, Tara Fawcett, yeah, that Tara Fawcett, and Peter Ustinov. It was based on a 67 novel, and was run by William Nolan and George Clayton Johnson. It's a future society on the surface, Utopia, but soon reviewed as a dystopia, a uh, very groovy one, in which the population and consumption of resources are maintained in equilibrium by killing anyone. Everyone terminated others who attempted to escape death and now faced with termination and himself. The film won a special Academy Award for special visual effects. I remember actually when it was awarded that and six Saturn Awards, including the best science fiction film sent off TV series here in 1977 to 78. By the way, when it got that special Academy Award, I believe Star Wars had just come out and everybody was wowed by those effects. I may be wrong, I'm trying to reach back in my brain, but I seem to recall it wasn't all that good special effects wise compared to what we got with Star Wars a year later. All right, let me see if I can get briefly through the plot. The year is 2274. Remnants of human uh, civilization live in a sealed city contained underneath a cluster of geodistic stones. Utopia run by a computer that takes care of all aspects of life, including reproduction. Citizens live in a hedonistic lifestyle but prevent, to prevent overpopulation. Everyone must overgo the right of carousel when they reach the age of 30. 
They're killed under the guise of being renewed. Track this, each person on the planet is birthed with a life clock crystal in the palm of the left hand. This crystal changes color as they get older, it's blinking as they approach their final day. Uh, most residents accept this as uh, alleged chance for rebirth, but those who do not flee the city known as Runners. A elite team of huntsmen known as Sandmen, outfitted in predominantly black uniforms, are assigned to pursue and terminate the runners as they try to escape hopefully their fashion East of Duke. Logan 5 and Francis 7 are both Sandmen. After terminating a runner in whose present day they were alerted during carousel rites, Logan finds an aunt among his possessions. Later that evening, he meets Jessica Six, a young woman who is wearing an aunt and then Logan takes the aunt to the computer, which tells him that it is a simple for a secret group whose members help the runners find sanctuary, a mythic place where they will be safe to live out the rest of their lives. Logan learns that they have lost a thousand fifty six runners this way. The computer instructs Logan, go find sanctuary and destroy it. Uh, then the computer changes the color of his life clock to flashing red. The feature is code named 3303, suddenly making four years closer to carousel. Logan is now scared and asks if the four years will be restored to him. Of course, they won't. In order for the escape distance, Logan is now forced to become a runner. Logan meets Jessica and explains his intention to run. They meet in the underground group that leads them to the periphery of the city. Logan learns that the on simple is to actually a key that unlocks the exit from the city. They come out into a frozen cave, Francis following closely behind. In the cave, they meet Box, what I imagine to name a robot designed to capture food for the city from the outside. Logan discovers to his horror, Box also captures and freezes before Logan. The robot outside locates their life their operation. And for the first time, it remains in the and becomes a whole city that Washington, D.C. in the ruins of the chamber. Elderly born with that. Is this anyone or that man? The old that we remember what happened inside the city. Logan realized he has all this. He also asked the man in the scratch. This has fall. Logan, I Logan, Francis, H. Francis, White Cox, soon knew Logan. Wait, the old the city with man's again. That's proof that. Outside city, especially people. Down out at the city tunnel and it's everyone. I get out enough before capture and computer with and it was secure zero three and completed it. This error was Exposed and a bunch of missing walls. Group are not a computer, even in flying, both causing the field release. The other citizen, one city, the citizen, the cat that they have met, the older, proving that they live there longer than here. Oh, that's All of that, I remember why the plot, uh, and I, and that's because I watched this movie, I should have lasted, I wanted to sleep. So, I'm going to go ahead and uh, this is out of you probably it. I have to answer that are or three of So
us all mad and son. All the cats, Elliot, man, what falls apart? But I wonder, is everybody getting? I'm not sure they were place, and I don't know. This movie rips. Enjoy watching. Uh, but uh, oh, and there's Mad Men too. There's a lot of them. The population. Uh, it's the most I kind of whole sort of bits that don't make sense, but all the fun things to say. Theater, and we in the theater. Why? Never. Okay, now, and we continue which is for our final. Let's run. Five. Oh wow! Great friend. Uh, you and Mom doesn't have a loop. That would have been a C. Run. Part of the thing, mall scene is actually. Oh well, Tony on the. There is a lot, lot that is action plot that sense. Like why dressed obvious. Uh, bring you know their first they wear age and the people would green you know they're cool and like ring their out so uh plot was easy it had some uh good tension I do wonder what the robot that was everybody? I don't know. Um, uh, drinking that in the movie, the, that energy. I think that's what everybody electrolyte. I think that's what everybody thinking. It was keeping we eating much physique. So, uh, but when you're 30 and all they do is throw it on. I guess when I saw people sticks and like a hot, it's like a like exercise uh, related exercise. This is a thing. I I pretty good. Like easy to follow. Thing I didn't sit or going on. Um, times I got all the, but overall and. and that there were no anywhere. I three comment. Some of the scenes were a couple. I thought that was interesting. We'll talk about that later. Um, well, I guess when they finally and then Jesse finally got out of out of and figured out. That they were looking for, and they were, and, um, you know, they could have really been pretty, good, but I think they pretty much got a moment where they stopped on these. Um, I think the movies were to see how much they could PG rating. I'll probably later too. Um, but that was all right. You know, 
mixing of it. They didn't mention this. They didn't uh, um, throwing, throwing plastic scene <laughs> where uh, the ghost to face. If you don't like it, you can go the you know up and into like late face and he spotted this helping uh, uh, he took him to lift shop and uh, the face lift figured out what was and tried to high and laser a million people <laughs> uh, somehow tape and the doctor got it anyway that was that was quite and that did happen back later on I, you know I the most and horrifying thing is generally is just, just follow it and I don't know like this of the computer that's being like oh Super computer, everything. And if you throw like people in it, with, you know, um, freaks out, killing everybody, or making it all up. I kind of silly, but for them, getting the city is a little bit, a little bit over the. I like the end. Uh, I like the man back. I guess he just, you know, people come back, tell her on uh, the carriage is a little bit like a roller and just saying, go watch. And then really, the hockey man, that was kind of a little out of Um, really charged thing, and uh, I wanted to keep to find out what happened. Like, generally, the uh, movie, and I enjoyed watching. Hadn't seen it. Virginia, thank you. Up a snap, go ahead and write away. But remember, so he is friend of that L. The film in time, friend, but I was at first point of this competing with first, it was. Uh, spring of seven, of course, for May of seven, so we've been up for the uh, Oscar. So, uh, one of the plot is punk, a secret that they're wearing. For everybody, oh, no. for anybody, this is a little mess. Uh, I didn't understand, you know, the uh, ancient religion. Don't know. 
I just think it was a maybe. Easy to understand, but it was, you know, like, most apocalypse, a whole lot of hypnotics that get there. And I uh, wonder what left to kill every for 30th. Grandfather did 30, 50. But be curious in charge why and all the other. Just uh, one in Manhattan and a lot of but no okay. So, who, you know, who trash can floors, children, and, uh, uh, the food? Well, you don't know somebody else talking about that. I think Tony, food. See what he's Plenty of alcohol, apparently. But, uh, food and, you know, I wonder about their work as well. Oh. Uh, gotta have fun. Everybody wants to make the clothes. Red wants to mix the lady. That big hit. But, I'm Terry, just money to make real all these. So this and a real type. Have all this uh, aerial bolt that they keep. Basically, took these little just you know, of sewing and get somewhere. Character screens, and they never tell us at the end of it, we're gone. I think we went through some uh, culty thing and everything. There are things like taking a beat. I got a bunch of off. Uh, it's a little flimsy. I've hated to uh, walk all the time. So, well, uh, things, uh, uh, there's a, I, we do several locations, of there was a, and, there was a park, California, loving, and, all, um, and the, and, uh, all places that, well, that's all I have. Back to that. Well. Hey, thank you, Brent. Uh, what's next? Today, you're hot for our Logan to run.
out. Um, I'm around for even that though. But it's off to the next one. But I mean, okay. Just I good and bad. Traffic is And uh, uh, a little bit strange, nostalgic, like others to the set, the move, all your images and gifts, spiral set without the stick. Of course, star where you can lose. Uh, other set, uh, the Karis, for some reason, the museum that. I'm a laser map. Yes. Mapping of the laser. And again, he's here. Early age. And of course, the God of God. Uh, more stock. Grandiose. Uh, still. They're, they're almost Fort Worth. And very. These fun version of the HX1. It's. Leisure about regiment, but the cats require to stay, which is a lot of short all one duration. The movie choir, uh, and yeah, the uh, strange symbol. It's really about afterlife, afterlife, and uh, everything. Well, it's not connected. Um, it's uh, one of those I'll watch down there. It's visiting an old DVD. Give it in right next to the gate as well. Keep that in mind. Okay. Bottom of our KB is okay. We back in. Oh, he made it. I see him there. He's back on. Step the way. Uh, do I check in? Find your name and get you a woven for 75. Well, I'll go ahead. And then, yes, this is filmed in the Trade Center. Uh, the, uh, gone now. Each one of the, uh, but, uh, building for my, uh, the boss's, uh, party with the building. I, I, uh, nobody, uh, so well, including my boss. For a long time. But at any rate, uh, the center, the apparel is uh, in the business. Go inside. 
chance going through they like you see where you saw large uh, covered up color like kind of a scale model of when you when each of the so a small walk in thing that you could walk around there's other people facing was never uh, just told the biz to find buyers their fashion. Oh, I was in here, but I guess. Now, the problem was with temper and computer decided they brought the kind of a spot so crazy over the thing. Blowing up the and, and uh, it wasn't the answer that. Okay, it's 200, you blow up something or shut it off. You even have here to tell you the uh, process. So they built this, they put like this around, around and uh, uh, and they could, when it got open, maybe it's him to really check him to the other parts of, of, I don't know, what he said, well, uh, what and then what is going to do that? Hey, he's fine. Just wizard Bob. And just see, see looking, this is a uh, smarter look at fair, dumber than, and he survived uh, working at whatever it's called. But, but he, he keeps his son, and he goes to the building, all the computer bombs, nice, and then he's been in being killed from the, so I don't know why now. And no, so let's see. Uh, I do it to set replacement. I don't know. Is there anything you want to do? Yeah, take those little, little, I don't know, shopping places. <laughs> But we don't know one kid, Logan, uh, who it is, his or I don't know, I far along the way. But nobody else came. There ain't a chance. Just very confusing. I, I didn't an explosion. That guy with the cat, the only person I had to the movie. Where you would tell the uh, thing is the world building he is trying to act and so on. And we never read And then the film, which is position, they all uh how living in the end and act. I guess that's all I all of that. That's on that I'm in Brown. So we will add that uh, see if 5 L E 
the uh, here. Uh, uh, So, uh, up with Tony, right? so, yeah, Tony. So, the movie was listed under the uh, wiki as an alternative as well. I don't know if that was kind of one of the reasons. Same with Kennedy and, and Clark. Or, now, I should I remember saying cat. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, well, your character is a five I. Careful, your the cat. Yeah, the choice. I read the by Isaac by Arthur. Uh, I think they are we interest uh, in a lot of ways. It does have some with its character, Michael York, Gordon, and, and all of Peter Ustin. It's so basically. Those odd. What are you gonna gonna be talk about my? It's like oh, that. Uh, the thing that I thought was touch. You know, I saw this movie like uh, what was David? David. It was on TV and always edited and, and lots of rooms. And about the part in the going crazy because but Gene Man that when I was tied in character was actually you know very pretty easy when you're a lot of life there's a start lording suffering can go wrong start having experiences you're and, and more and more, and again, the first movie were kind of people at all. I mean, when the the phone call, kill them, have the to throw to shut them. This is my bit. Oh, and the friend the runner. Um, I thought Logan's case was uh, pre-established. It was funny. They were the only in that bad job. So it's like, we he's fine. Uh, the computer decided who was to have the um, spark. I, I think all the uh, kind of people that were like, maybe they were some really superior. They were the fathers of, and so they knew about. It. I don't know, cause it like, you know, related men and women, but play wasn't even any. 
love ship. It was that was pretty well beginning between Logan and uh, the character. Uh, flesh made you uh, that made you, um, you know up as some question question as well and have a character. I think he did have a character arc because he was in the hot his life by several years. He was supposed to be in Poe, I guess, and then he, you know, sympathizing, coming, you know, and um, his buddy was more hard, you know, that experience was nice to be there and uh, kind of to his friend. Um, man was the only one of Washington, and I think that he did a human population just rare to have survived or maybe there were a few out of the city to procreate a couple Lost track of what was going on. Yeah, he was kind of a little old guy, cat. Um, well, he represents things, um, the value in here. There are things that we learn today. Like, um, I think handedly have the idea that. And discovering how it is human and living, and thing besides flesh, ultimately, if you just do nothing, live for yourself, and you like surgery, God, you have to have somebody to robot everything up. And when everybody, I don't know if people have, maybe they just all the time with some set up this problem had thought that the seeing enough tell them apart watching them and the message that hedonism or your and you know and your e.g. Uh, suffering um, not some you know paying your way or with then oh you know, your life actually just because of you um, it's a form of and uh, people their lives and uh no, there's just about a mental, you know, group mentality. Never been a good person, so these are usually of them to me obvious. About the acting, I thought um, the characters they were well played were. That interest about um, definitely uh, the apes here uh, and their movies. I mean, this was kind of a topic, and it was thing that first thing. I uh, thousand one, thousand one, and uh, you know how old wish she had his. Is that she was? She was. She. She was. Was uh. She threw hardcore term at the end. Um. But yeah, I. I like the kind of beginning to people, and almost like creation and one who is old. Um. 
think that some society a little dose of people longer and longer. Do you have a things this technology stuff to help longer and that's supposed to make our lives uh better longer, but the longer is all really overwhelming because it's scary longer and in a that has less of for you and more and from problem uh, as, as a uh, for it. All right, thank you. Some really sense there. Uh, people as they developed it. I think we're really trying to think. So, yeah, I agree with uh, person here, in fact. See the Fred OZF. That's what your thoughts Uh, I like the app, like Michael in the day. Jay Yaga, I thought that was she ever did. Her family, she's really, this is the one uh, here in America, sure. Uh, an article that we, we have a, a actor. Because they have to act, whereas we go to to get a job, they're real act. We're not just to the office. This really exist, and it's so us. You know, we wonder what was that made. You know of it all for is there and their meaning you know what a lot of people no art in civilization of art have a great for their be it music or or uh, or whatever um had no credit whatsoever uh, what did they have? A concert? Uh, swim? Um, football game? Go leave. You know, so different. From and, and all of our civilized in the tribes, leave. These like protest thirteen year down the balls and stuff and giggling and uh, uh being immature people are all um do you have any books? Um very sterile oh, uh, to me. And you said they weren't. So they weren't. Um, Logan and him were having a good and ain't the wrong. And it was just kind of that they were such a good time. I never buy that. At least the point is 
you know, low voice kind of came and became a lot as the more on. I still don't understand the thing like a third. Most of it, hang on. Like it's a, nobody wants the people who are on. Right? If? Well, it's true. They didn't have any pets. No. Yeah, I got her. She didn't know what was. They ate arms for their Nobody knows. But most people have pets. You want to walk around and important to all have our furry people had this is a place they not like to so we have and uh, you know I want to you know early I want to in as long as I can you know too miserable People are stuck in their prime. So, people are saying, I, I understand. I do. I think when two people in my life, two feeble, um, but lots of stuff to bed. Society, for whatever you're used to, it's just started. In your, and you, the more you go in your, in your personal development relationship, and uh, it's just more because everything that people are in there. So you're like, and yeah, now we're back and again in the future. So kind of think about uh, if I be okay, your organization. Think oh, we're talking about talking about. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, therefore, just to go off the, yeah, sure, back to my opinion, yeah, whatever, but old people, <laughs> yeah, are just tough, well, play sense. But anyway, I digress. Yeah. Talk about there's like the only, the only really seem to have the stand man and was his purpose. So I mean, there wasn't Mr. Wood not really go with the judge in that. There you go. The work of Nora. I don't know if there was a to do to do it's not just long to I'm going to 
Yeah, I know. 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 Yeah, I know.
I think I want to say on. Oh, okay, you for that. I appreciate the comments others have made that they are very there uh, in an age when both of experience and you know to do is is now this die early and chance to evolve and mature. Uh, but uh, people at you enthusiasm for all the violence uh, uh, blasted levitation viral. Not unlike in role of the distance. The, the death, you know, those things, the you know, Vietnam era, kind of a theme to compare to people to, uh, to see the violence, really appreciate embrace it. And uh, look at movies, especially for hero and uh, anime and all. It's extreme. And the U.S. That culturally, uh, anyway, um, you know whether you're side of a like uh, the globe that that it's the uh, environments of um, of uh, here or being on the uh, touch screen, still having a limited distance if you're interacting. And, uh, and uh, you know, just really self development, really growing self. Your con- in AI can uh, both and computer in the low uh, facility. You know, they're similar to 2000, where it was became parent because the information. Was very you know, it was. It's funny, and even to you, you can play with AI to at least endpoint. Just says, well, I'm that, or I'm the model. In case of this Logan's run, Zerk could start things. So it's just this program to answer the better. Thank you, David. One another. Quickly, because well, and Sorry, I've not the last two years and now for a lot. Let me see if you still with here on eighty nine F Sean Hart one to the back five ice. Okay, no, 
and I'm comment here characterization. I one else that I you know to change with you know who's a folks not very simple. Of course he's involved and he got more of the of life the group uh, just fine I thought uh, her name Peter Peter you um, yeah but here's a lot uh, Okay, I to add to that. I'm going to do, uh, we have anything that we have less time the uh, uh, platform here. So it is next section. Talk about special any of those. I'm going to throw if you have a comment to make on any or any on the first, I'm going to go ahead and order that I signed. So, in Okay, I got that in five each after you are done with your and everything. So never continue your first. Go ahead. Tom, I don't know what I like Jerry Gold's classic. He did a or was real three in the as they to you know or finding where he, things go. They became closer to normal. The, the, to a more traditional score. I thought that was a pretty good thing when they went back to the synthesis act, but then it had the triumphant election. Of course, I water guard of that one. I got really, like, oh, I've been able to see, like, the place I'd been. And I posited it with the seashore. See, like the water garden beach special effect all the special effect models were models interior just malls and places where they you know make it look without having big things or things they did as little possible and then they're Somewhere I could have on a but they probably be on the wash. That's funny when I'm um, in school, you know. Okay. Um, I thought the school is definitely you know way and it was what it needed. Um, and I, I just 
get back of the uh, whole movie was for me. Um, you know, it was a thing that I think actually come true. Everything that was through you know, 30 years later is always something old, you know, than in movies, but Brenda was doing her society just listened to the general way too well described now. There is a lack of she said longevity and longevity um, and uh, in, in, for what you know anybody who's under the age of no offense or what people who uh, who 25 what they're going to be 80 you know the the of um, to be entertained, of not wanting to people, uh, of not making, of, you know, life gets, the thing is you get older, I found it harder. Um, I think it's because we just think, hey, every click into place, and I'm going to look is that going on, I control, and you're about 30, you realize, wow, maybe there's a few of that, but look up what, oh man, but you realize it happened, and you're taking it till you harder, because you get the less, you know, people really want to take care of you. You're not that young that needs needs a little a little hand people or you know help just kind of oh you know that, so you know I don't know if I got a phone call that he just wanted um, you know, to kind of find values and this movie was about people away from that these who realize this is Too much useless information. Hard to figure out now, and um, that you said before it ended, but the point made of and and getting all working, and suffering, uh, having just your it's in the work, you know. Um, it's it's what defines us. It gives us and it makes it makes us strong, better. It makes thing pursuing uh, our plan do that too. Uh, it just how do I get any work done? You know, how do I get to do any? You you don't realize what makes life a makes it good. Uh, I'm trying to make that I use they were talk about we are still even more now the thing talking about data subtle way true it bothers me. so tonight we're in a minute to buy this. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. For, uh, I was, and uh, I'll make 
short because it's fun to do that. And it has that things happen time. It just reaches how it's an election. So many different technologies that that being might have done person. Even the things that were pretty cool in a way at time. Aware of our I think that's just another thing that us all doesn't become worse. I have no good movie. We'll just find Max Steel 15. Says here up. He, uh, the teenager said his age is 
Thank you. 